This video covers HydroShield air spray system installation and setup. This is the HydroShield air spray batch waterborne isolation system. We have removed the system from the shipping pallet and installed the optional wheels. Another option is to mount the isolation cabinet to the wall or to the floor. To wall mount, use L brackets and mounting hardware with the mounting holes provided on the side of the frame. Remove the feet from the frame and secure the system to the wall. To mount on the floor, use the bolt holes where the wheels are now installed. The light tower bracket comes installed on the isolation cabinet. You can move the bracket if you choose. The light tower indicates how much paint is in the pump as it fills and dispenses. It should be mounted where it is visible to the painter, but must be mounted in the non-hazardous location. For this video, we are installing in a non-hazardous location. Use the screws and nuts provided to mount the light tower onto the light tower bracket. Connect the CAN cable on the light tower to the control interface. Longer cables are available separately. Connect the isolation cabinet ground wire to a true earth ground. Next, we're gonna connect the fluid hose from the gun to the cabinet. We're gonna start by removing the gun air inlet fitting, remembering that it's a left-hand thread. Remove the O-ring and install the fitting through the bracket. Reassemble the O-ring. Then generously apply dielectric grease to the O-ring and threads of the barrel fitting on the fluid hose. Pull the fitting back one and a half inches and apply grease to the exposed hose to fill the area between the hose and the fitting. Make sure the barrel inlet is clean and dry. Screw the fitting into the fluid inlet of the gun barrel and tighten. Loosen the strain relief nut on the hose so that the bracket can move freely on the fluid hose. Align the bracket and install the air inlet fitting. Tighten the fitting between 75 and 85 inch pounds. Tighten the strain relief nut to secure the hose. Then check that the nut and ferrule housing are tight and secure on the bracket. Press the exhaust tube onto the exhaust valve barb and secure with a clamp. Thoroughly tighten the fluid fitting at the barrel of the gun. Next, we will connect the fluid hose to the fluid pressure regulator inside the cabinet. If the system has been in service before opening the cabinet, follow the pressure relief procedure and the voltage discharge and ground procedure outlined in the manual. Open the cabinet and slide the electrostatic shield up to remove it. Remove the fluid outlet strain relief ferrule from the strain relief housing on the cabinet. Slide the strain relief ferrule over the conductive layer of the hose until it reaches the abrasion layer. Feed the hose through the strain relief housing into the cabinet until it reaches the tube compression fitting on the fluid regulator. Unscrew the nut portion of the fitting. Slide the nut onto the fluid hose followed by the front ferrule then the back ferrule. The wider side of each ferrule faces the nut. Push the hose down into the tube compression fitting until it is fully seated into the fitting body. Tighten to 55 inch pounds. Thread the strain relief ferrule into the strain relief housing and tighten it until the hose is secure. Check that the ball valve is open to allow fluid flow. Remove the isolation valve cover. 
Then check for and remove the shipping tie wrap from the isolation valve. Fill the wash fluid bottle with HydraShield cleansing solution above the minimum line marked on the bottle. Reinstall the isolation valve cover, then reinstall the electrostatic shield inside the cabinet and close the cabinet door. Connect the gun air hose to the gun air inlet swivel. Remember, this is a left-handed thread connection. Connect the air hose from the gun to the air outlet on the isolation cabinet. Then attach the ground wire to a true earth ground. Check the resistance between the gun handle and a true earth ground. The resistance must be less than 100 ohms. Also check the resistance between the exterior of the cabinet and a true earth ground. This resistance must also be less than 100 ohms. Connect the air supply hose to the cabinet. The maximum air pressure is 100 psi. The minimum required air pressure is 70 psi. For the best performance, use an air supply hose with a minimum of 3 8 inch diameter and avoid quick disconnect connectors. Install a bleed type air valve near the cabinet to easily turn off the air supply during installation or service. Connect the fluid supply hose between the fluid supply and the fluid inlet on the isolation cabinet. We're using a Triton pump to supply fluid to the cabinet today. The maximum inlet pressure is 100 psi. If your supply has a higher pressure because of thicker material or because it's coming from a circulation system, Regulate the pressure to 100 PSI at the inlet of the cabinet. For faster fill times, use a large and short supply line between the supply pump and the cabinet to minimize pressure drop. Also, use a large suction tube on your supply pump. Connect the provided CAN cable to the cabinet, then to the control interface. Plug in the power cord. When the system is plugged in, the control interface powers up in off mode. 